All right, so we want to determine the reduction in the polar second moment of area of the square plate due to the introduction of the circular hole. All right, so what, what are they trying to tell us here? So we know that the first second moment of area is going to be bigger than the second one, right? Because it says there's a reduction in second moment of area. So I'm going to say that I1 is greater than I2. So what does this mean? Well, we have to account for the whole, correct? Because when we introduce something that punctures a hole or something that's cut into our area, there's going to be a, some sort of reduction in second moment of area, right? Think about composite shapes. When we're doing centroids of composite shapes, if there's a hole somewhere or if there's a cut somewhere in a shape, it's a composite shape, and we have to subtract that area of the centroid of that shape. So it's the same idea here. So we know that the second moment of area of the first shape, which is just the entire square shaded in, right? There's no circle here. This is all shaded minus the second one, which has the introduction of the circular hole, and that's I2. So I'll write this uh, to be more specific. So the first one is going to be the whole square, the whole entire square with no hole, right, no cuts. And it's just going to be, think about, remember, think about it just being a whole square. This entire area is shaded in. So we'll write this as I1, right? Now I1 is the polar moment of area. They want us to find the polar second moment of area, right? So the polar moment of area is just going to be Ix, which is the second moment of area about the x-axis here, plus the second moment of area about the y-axis. That's it. That's all you need to do to find the polar moment of area of a shape. Wherever you create your coordinate system, it's the second moment of area of the x-axis plus the y-axis. That's the polar moment. And we can go ahead and safely assume that Ix is equal to Iy. Why is that? Well, we can see that it's a square, obviously, so the dimensions of the height and the base are going to be the same. So when we do this, when we do the second moment of area of both of these axes, it's actually going to end up being the same. So that's why we can assume that Ix is equal to Iy here. So let's go ahead and find Ix, and in, in turn, we're going to actually find Iy too. So Ix is just bh cubed, right, of a square, just an entire square. So the length of the base is 4r, right? So 4r we have right here. Let me go down a little bit. 4r times the height. Now the, it's a square dimension, so the height is going to be 4r. But this dimension is actually going to be cubed. divided by 12. So that's Ix, now we need to add Iy. And remember, Iy is the same thing as Ix. So it's the same thing as adding the same thing or just multiplying it by two. So that's the second moment of area of the polar of the first shape. Now let's simplify it here. So we get a one sixth and we can simplify this two thirds. So this fraction is going to be two thirds r. Now this is r times r cubed. So I'm going to pull out a factor of r4 here. And then four cubed, right? This is actually cubed right here. So four cubed. Four times four is 16. And then 16 times four should be 64. Okay, and then we can go ahead and uh, multiply the fraction out here. 64 times 2 is 128. 
over three times r four. All right, so this is our answer of the second moment of area of the polar uh, of just the entire square. All right, so that's the whole entire square. Now we need to find the second moment of area with the whole in here. All right, so what would that be? Well, think about composite shapes, right? For composite shapes, we have the area that's shaded in, that's the one that we're adding. So whatever shaded in, we have the entire square. We add that minus whatever cut we made. So in this case, we made a hole in here. So it's gonna be the square minus the circle second moment of area. So it's the second moment of area of the square, I'll write it as SQ, minus the second moment of area of the circle. Okay. Now we found the second moment of area of a square. We said that was 4R times 4R cubed divided by 12. So 4R times 4r cubed. Now 4 cubed, remember we said is 64 times r cubed divided by 12. And we're subtracting this minus the circle, the second moment of area of the circle, right? Now remember, we need to find what what is the second moment of area of the circle. Now the formula for that is this. So I of a circle, I'll write it as I C, is going to be pi, whatever the radius is, and actually I'll write the radius as a lowercase r to the fourth divided by four, right? So in this case, the second moment of area of this circle that we have here is just going to be, well, the radius is capital R. So we replace the radius that we have here with capital R. So that's why I made that lowercase r so you could see the distinction. So it's going to be pi capital R to the fourth divided by fourth. And then we go ahead. So now that we know what the circle is, the uh, second moment of area of that circle is just going to be uh, subtracted. So it's going to be minus pi r to the fourth divided by four right here. So if so, that's just for one shape, right? Now we have the second moment of area, I'm going to go ahead and erase this since I'm going to be writing down here. All right. Now that's only for one axis. I should have indicated that. So this is for one axis. Remember, the second moment of area is the polar. The polar is we're adding both of the axes. So actually, let me make the distinction right here. I'm going to make a line right here. Now, Remember, this is our whole square, the whole entire shaded square. This is just going to be our square with the whole. So it's going to be our whole square with a capital H. There's a hole in our square. So there's a difference between whole square and a whole square, right? Even though they sound the same. So i of 2 is just going to be i of x plus i of y. So in this case, I wrote i of 2x. So I'll write this as i of 2x plus i of 2y. Now we know that i of x is equal to i y in this case, right? Due to symmetry, we have a square inscribed in that uh, square is a circle exactly centered with the radius r. So we know that i of 2x is equal to i of 2y. Don't you just love symmetry? <laughs> I do. 
So in this case, we're going to have i of 2x multiplied by 2 because they're the same thing. i of 2y is the same as 2x. So we have 4r. Now we can go ahead and simplify this. So this should actually be, uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and write this step again. So it's going to be 4r to the 4th times 64 divided by 12. All right. And we're subtracting this with pi r4 divided by 4. All right. So with that in mind, that's for the x-axis. Now the y-axis, we just add the same thing because they're the same. We know that i of 2x is equal to i of 2y. So let's just go ahead and multiply this by 2. All right. So this simplified should give us, uh, we go ahead and pull out r4 right here. So r to the fourth, factoring that out. And this should be uh, 4 over 6, 4 over 6 times 64. Right, I'm, I'm actually going to factor in the 2 here, or FOIL it in, times pi over 2. All right. And uh, we can we can say it's this. We can simplify it a little bit if you want to. So 4 divided by 6 is 2 thirds. So we can say that this is 2 thirds right here. And then we have uh, 2 times 64 is 128. So let's go ahead and write that. So R4 times 128 over 3 minus pi over 2. Now that is the second moment of area of the polar axis of the second shape in which we introduce the circular hole, right? So now we want the reduction, the percent reduction. What is the percent reduction? Or we can say it as the percent increase, or sorry, not increase, decrease, right? Reduction means decrease. So percent decrease is going to be whatever is the higher or the area containing the higher second moment of area. So in this case, it's I1 minus the lower one, I2, divided by the original. So the original we started with was finding I1. That's the one we started with, the whole entire square. So we take I1, so I1, and we multiply this by 100 for the percent, right? So I1, let's go ahead and write that out. I1, we said, is 128 over 3R to the fourth. So 128 divided by 3 times R4 minus R4. I have the R4 factored out here, times 128 over 3 minus pi over 2, minus pi over 2. And this is divided by uh, the first area, which is 128 over 3 times R to the 4th. Now let me write a uh, clear 2 here. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and solve this. This should give us a percentage. So we know if we factor out R4 here, they cancel out in the numerator and the denominator. So let's go ahead and plug this into the calculator. So I'm going to do 128 over 3 minus pi divided by 2. And so 128 divided by 3 minus that second one divided by, so we divide it by 128 and we multiply it by 3. And this is also multiplied by 100. 
so that we get our percent. So our percent reduction, we multiply this by 100, should give us 3.68%. Now that's how much we have decreased in the second moment of area of the second shape compared to the first second moment of area with the entire square. All right, so that is it. I am going to finish the second moment of area series right here. And in the next series of statics, I'm going to start working on some beam problems. So hope to see you there.